Here's another of the uh, 500 series plugins in my collection. We have this Type B plugin from the 1960s. I've had it since 1986. Um, I don't think I've ever really used it. Um, I, I do recall uh, trying it out at one point. And later in the video, um, maybe we'll try it out again, see if it does work. So this particular uh, Type B has some uh, electrolytic capacitors in it and and also like this large cap here otherwise known as a, uh, a bumblebee or black beauty I think this one's a black beauty the bumblebees have colored stripes on them so it might be problematic um, with uh, bad capacitors um, if I were to power this up um, here we have a, another electrolytic capacitor in addition to, to that one back there Construction in the bottom. Um, there's a lot of a uh, lot of components in here, and there's another uh, Black Beauty sitting along the side over there, as well as yet one more over there. So what the Type B is? It's a, a two-channel preamp, but it's not a dual trace preamp. In other words, there's two inputs available to be connected over on the uh, PL259 uh, probe connectors, but the selector switch only allows you to pick one or the other, and AC or DC of either one. Uh, vertical position, and then we have our uh, sensitivity or gain control here. Um, the sailing point for the Type B is it has a range, I guess only AC only, where you can go down to five millivolts per division so it has more sensitivity than for example uh, the CA unit that I have in my type 531 oscilloscope only goes down to 50 millivolts per division this uh, I'd be interested to know the history of this um, probe because there's an old Cal sticker on it from 1964 and then the, the date of the, the main name, name of the company that did the cal here was Kentron Hawaii Limited from Honolulu. So it must have got into the surplus government equipment stuff and ended up in the school system. And then I got it uh, in 1986 along with a bunch of other stuff. Alright, next we'll take a look at uh, what the Tektronix catalog from 65 to 66 has to say about the, the Type B. Here is the Tektronix 1965-1966 uh, equipment catalog and we're on the page showing the, the specs and information on the Type B plug-in. Um, so here we have uh, some information on the specifications for the Type B And this has a list price of $145. Little research I did finds that an earlier version of the Type B was offered first in 1954. Um, and it changed the, it was a B, and then like a 53B and a 5354B, and then back to a B. And these were in the catalog uh, until 1970 or 71, from what I recall reading. So it was available for a long time, and I'm wondering why, since there were other other plugins with maybe more capabilities than this one, but maybe it had some applications that uh, certain users found uh, found beneficial. All right, I've put the uh, Type B uh, plug-in. Uh, in my type uh, 531 oscilloscope. This is probably the first time it's been in here and gosh it's it's probably 30 years maybe more than that. Um, it does seem to be working. Um, I do have a few issues with it that we'll go over. So one of the things I had to go find 
was I have a, a pair of P6006 probes from the 1960s that have um, this PL259 coax type connector instead of more commonly seen BNCs that you would find in the starting in the later 60s and up to the present day on a scope. Uh, I do have some adapters to actually use these on a BNC and put the, the probes. But it's nice to put the correct connectors together without any adapters. Alright, so I have uh, two, two of those hooked up and they're both going into the calibrator output. And this, pro, this scope uh, plug-in, you can pick which one or input you're seeing, but they're going to have the same attenuator setting on the switch here. Alright, so I have this uh, set up and I've previously kind of tweaked on some of the pots a little bit. So you got this DC balance control, and then over on the side of the scope, there's this uh, access hole that says vertical positioning range, and that hole allows you to get a pot on a, uh, at a pot that's in the plug-in for setting um, the, the zero point, if you will, of uh, the amplifier input. So I had set that so that when the pot was dead in the middle. I was on the center line and I've already moved it a couple times but I see it's drifted off again. So it's probably the root cause is one of those Black Beauty uh, capacitors inside the plug-in is leaking a little bit and it's changing the bias point on some of the tubes. Because I've worked on this scope enough and some of the other plug-ins that I, I've got that problem corrected on when using other plug-ins. But this one, this one has it so it will slowly, it's slowly drifting. But it's going to work good enough for this video. Alright, so right now I have the calibrator turned off. So we're going to turn him on. And we do have a, a signal here. Let me turn the intensity down a little bit. And so on our, uh, on our vertical amplifier with the 10x probe here, the, what looks like a half a volt per centimeter is actually 5 volts per centimeter and I have the calibrator set to put out 20 volts peak to peak so you'd expect uh, four, four divisions of deflection up here and we don't quite have four divisions of deflection so the gain is off on this range so let's turn, uh, turn that down so that we get half of that so now we still have the 20 volts peak to peak but now this is set for 10 volts per division and that one looks a little closer and you also notice that the edges of the square wave are squarer than they were here so there's some problems with the uh, compensation networks on the attenuator inputs of our plug-in and you'll really see that on some of the other ranges let's go to uh, this one for example which would be the 0.2 divisions or in this case 2 volts you notice there's an overshoot there Let's turn our amplifier, our calibrator down a bit. Hang on a second, where's my, did I lose my trace? Yes, I did. Cool. I have lost my trace. Bear with me. All right, we got our trace back. I think I turned my stability, triggering stability control the wrong direction and uh, it was not triggering anymore. Um, getting a little panic here. So you can see, on this uh, 0.2 volts per centimeter, or in this case with the 10x probe, 2 volts peak to peak division, we got uh, our, ten our calibrator set for 5 volts peak to peak. So this should be 2 volts. So this is this the gain on this one is off as well. However, we got this horrible overshoot undershoot going on with the attenuators. And as I change my gain setting, you notice on the next one, it goes away. So now it, that went down to five volts per division and five volts per division. So that one, the gain is, is much closer than some of the other ones. And all these problems are in the plug-in unit. So we're looking at input two, DC mode. And if you go to AC mode, it switches in a capacitor and it slowly sinks down as I'd expect. We should get the same thing 
on the AC mode for the other channel selector. And the only difference is just going to be which input, and since we're both tied to the same place, they will look the same. And then you have a uh, that looks the same as it did on the other input, as you'd expect. But going back to point two, we got this horrible overshoot undershoot. So the problem problem here is after the uh, input input networks and it gets into the gain selector or the attenuator selector switch is where the problem lies. And if we look at some of the other inputs, they are. That one is okay. We turn that one down, turn that one on. That one has got a, a little bit rounded off. But it's these, uh, these lower ones seem to have more of an issue. Let's keep adjusting things here to see what happens. turning up the amplitude of the uh, calibrator waveform. Yeah, it seems like this point two one has really got issues. I just want to say there was issues with one of the other ones as well. Yeah, for instance, this one is the uh, 5 here. So I have turned up the calibrator waveform as, as high as it goes, which is 100 volts peak to peak. So this should be 50 volts per division here. The gain is a little bit off, but yeah, we do have uh, this overshoot, undershoot stuff going on. So yeah, this uh, this plug-in, you know, nominally works, but it, it does have some some issues with the attenuator networks, and it's probably in all those uh, adjustable trimmer caps that we saw earlier in the video. There's there's a lot of them in there, uh, so some of those could be either just need adjustment or they're actually bad or are there some other parts in here that are bad from age now if we go back to turning our calibrator off and try to set this in the center again I guess it hasn't drifted too much further than it did earlier um, but yeah there'd be if I was going to use this for something I'd be changing out all those those paper capacitors that tend to drift over time and then have to address the problems with uh, with the attenuator networks and why there's overshoot, undershoot. All right, some video on the Tektronix Type B plug-in unit that, that may well have not been used on a regular basis since the 1960s, given that Caltech we saw earlier. All for now.